What's up guys? My name's Seth, you're watching Petro360 and today we're going to talk about five reasons why you shouldn't buy the Fitech EFI system. So I guess first off, I want to thank you to the new subscribers. Um, I've really had a lot of new people come to the channel, so welcome. And um, so I guess we'll jump right into it. Um, I've had the Fitech on my car for a couple thousand miles now. Um, and there's some things that work and some things that don't. So I figured I'd make a video and talk about the things that don't first because that's probably my biggest issue with the system. So before you, you know, nail me in the comments or anything like that, I'm not a professional tuner. I'm just a regular guy. So I'm trying to show what a regular Joe might have issues with on this system. So a little bit about the car, it's got a small block Ford V8, it's an Explorer long block um, with bolt-ons, so it has an Explorer camshaft and everything, it's bolted to a T5 5 speed, then that goes to a 411 rear gear and I'm running about 25, 26 inch tall tires. Um, for the fueling, I have a Walboro 255 in the tank. Um, this car already came with an in the tank pump, so it's just easier to stay with that. Um, so really my first issue is tuning. Um, this is an issue and a plus. I mean, literally, you put the system on, you crank the key, it's gonna start, it's gonna run. Um, and it runs pretty good, but the actual tuning of it is still just as finicky as a carburetor. Um, I've you know played with it and played with it and played with it and read through all the forums and it's still not 100%. So, number one, definitely my first issue. For my number two issue, it has to be the online support for the Fitech system. If you go onto the Fitech website, they talk about a lot of the settings, a lot of the things you can change, but they don't really give very good explanations for them. Um, maybe one or two sentences on most of the stuff doesn't tell you what it affects, what it changes, and how it actually affects in the long run. Um, so I was really disappointed reading through the website. I had to go to forums to find most of the information to start on the tuning. And another issue is, I have the 400 horsepower system, so the base model system, that's all this car needs. Um, but on their website, they give you all the tuning parameters, but it doesn't tell you which is included with which system. So I go online and I find the setting, it's like, oh, this is exactly what I need to change. This is gonna be what's affecting this issue. But I read on it, research it, go back to my system, and I don't have that setting. I can't change that setting because it's not included in the base model. It's only for the more expensive, the 600 or 1200 horsepower units. So that's been a bit of a pain. They don't even list what, you know, what settings are gonna be with your system. So the rest of my issues come down to the handheld. Now, honestly, this is a pretty sweet unit. Um, it is actual aluminum, I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's pretty rough, it's pretty rugged. Um, you know, the touchscreen, it works, but you know, it's not the best. But my biggest issues with it are the connectors. There are three pins, or no, two pins that go into this, um, and they suck. It's a, um, a headphone jack and a 12 volt jack. Um, why this isn't one connector, I have no earthly idea. It would have been much simpler, and why it doesn't have a snapping connection, I have no idea either. These fall out constantly. And if you have the issue, my next issue is the white screen issue you have to unplug these and put them back in and you can't just unplug the power you have to unplug both or the other one will fall out when you're trying to do it that sucks that should have been corrected um Fitech, why <laughs> so that leads into my next issue is the white screen um a lot of people have heard about this a lot of people have talked about it in the forums can't seem to find a for sure answer um, a lot of people say it has to do with um where you're getting power from, but essentially you go to crank it up and you get a white screen or the screen blacks out, which is probably more common for me. Um, but then you lose all your settings and that kind of stuff. It doesn't change the tune, but as far as like what gauges you were looking at and everything, they're gone. You have to go back in and reset your large gauges in the order you want. Um, I've read through, you know, a lot of people say it's where you draw power from. I'm drawing power directly from the main power for the entire car. This gets power, the EFI system gets power before any of the rest of the car. Um, so it shouldn't be an issue. It literally should not be an issue. The last issue I have with the system is the gauges themselves. Um, number one, they could have made the graphics a lot better. Um, the gauges are just a digital readout and they're in like, I think green on black screen, which is okay. It works well at night, you're not getting blinded. Um, because it doesn't have a dim section where you can make the screen darker. Um, but the issue is 
the, every time you go in and crank the car up, you have to set the large gauges. The large gauge is the only thing I use. You can't read all the small gauges on the, the dashboard screen while you're driving. So every single time I get in the car, I have to go into the settings and set at least my temperature gauge. If you have a 302, you only have one temperature port, um, which is you know a problem with the Ford motors, but the biggest issue is this is the only way I can know how hot or how cold my car is running. Without it, I'm in the dark. So I either need to add an inline coolant temp sensor with a gauge, it's already have the gauge in the car, but I can just use this, which I should be able to use this. and. Every time I get in, I have to set it up. I can't just you know, leave this away. I have to have this out. I have to get it set up. And that is a huge issue. That's a pain in the butt. It's getting pretty old. And probably from my last issue, um, I, I didn't even list this issue in the five reasons because nobody else is gonna have this issue. Um, I drive the car pretty hard. I don't race the car or anything, but I like to drive it hard. Um, and to do that, I have to heel toe shift. And if you don't know what that is, you can read it up. But essentially it's you know, rev match down shifting while you're braking at the same time. Um, but the issue is with the decel on the car, whenever I'm decelerating and braking and then I push in the clutch and blip the throttle with my heel, there's nothing there. Nothing happens, literally. I could be going, smack the throttle, nothing happens, and then once I'm done hitting the throttle, the RPMs jump maybe two or 300 RPM, not enough to do anything. I've gone through all the settings. The only way I can do it is shutting off the decel and what's the point in having it, you know? <laughs> And if you know any way of fixing this, I'd love to hear about it. If you have any other comments about any of the other issues I have, I know there's ways to jump around some of the things. I can wire in different connectors. I can wire in a switch so that every time I get the white screen, I can just kill the power to the, the handheld and turn it back on. But that's a, you know, it shouldn't do that. It shouldn't do that out of the box. It should just work. So, you know, these are just some ideas of things that I've had wrong with it. Um, you may have different problems. If it's an automatic transmission, you may not have some of these problems. But um, this is just kind of my reasons on why I wouldn't go back and buy the system again. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you like the video, make sure to hit the like button. Um, if you want to subscribe and see more about this car and um, the issues I have with the Fitech system or whatever EFI system I go on with later, um, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And uh, thanks, guys.